Welcome back to the Monday Show here on the Raj News. Ahead of the February 16 elections, 37 command commissioners of police have been redeployed to 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory and charged with the responsibility of ensuring that the elections at the various commands are peaceful, free, fair and transparent. The redeployment just a few days to the election was received with a lot of criticism from several groups, including the Coalition of United Political Parties, COP, who accused the Inspector General on the redeployment and several other matters around security is Assistant Commissioner of Police and Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Police Force, Frank Obama. It's good to have you here this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Uh, good morning to the citizens of the world. All right, to actually get you all, all started today, um, how is the police force, uh, what steps are the police force taking to ensure that they remain nonpartisan throughout these elections? Because allegations are already bedeviling the Nigerian police force leading up to the polls. Well, first of all, let me start by saying that these allegations are not unexpected. Um, this is a period of heightened political activities. And if you understand the ways and style of politicians, you expect that such allegations will from time to time come up. However, it is our responsibility as a very disciplined, very committed, very dedicated, and very professional police force to remain focused and refuse to be derailed and refuse to be caught up in the web of political controversies and political accusations and counter accusations. And in that regard, the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Mohamed Adamu, has consistent, consistently maintained that note. Starting from the very day he took over the mantle of leadership of the Nigerian police force, he did say, and very clearly and loudly, that the Nigerian police force under his leadership will be professional, will be nonpartisan, and will remain politically neutral in every sense of the word. He also said, and I do reiterate that here this morning, that the Nigerian police force under his leadership we provide a level playing field for all political actors to be able to play their games, exercise their franchise, and pursue their political goals without any let or hindrance. Okay, we if I may... are irrevocably committed to these commitments. Okay, if I may just come in there. Ahead of Saturday's election and the election that will follow in two weeks' time, what are the preparations? measures put in place by the police to ensure that the elections are violent free. Okay, let me start by saying that we, under the laws of this country, we, we do clearly understand what our responsibilities are, particularly as they relate to these elections. Um, specifically, it is our responsibility to protect the lives of everyone that will be involved in this election. It is our responsibility to ensure that INEC officials, both permanent and ad hoc staff, are given adequate security to enable them to discharge their statutory responsibilities without any form of intimidation. It is our responsibility to provide adequate security around candidates that are standing for this election, irrespective of their political leaning and the political party on the platform of the political party on which they are vying. It is also our responsibility to ensure the safety of INEC materials, whether they are sensitive materials or non-sensitive materials. It is our responsibility to provide security for elect election observers, monitors, whether they are local observers or international observers. It is also our responsibility to ensure that journalists will be covering these election elections. And I, when I talk of journalists, I'm talking about the accredited journalists that they are able to move around unmolested and unharassed in the course of performing their legitimate duties. It is also our responsibility to ensure that the ordinary Nigerian is able to wake up on the day of the election, leave his house, go to the police centers, cast his vote, and return home with any form of security hitch. 
These responsibilities are well defined by both the Constitution, the Police Act, as well as the Electoral Act. And these are the benchmark on which our performances during, this, during and after these elections should be measured. And in the post ones of the, uh, and, and in, 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 in a B to ensure that we carry out these, these functions successfully, we've already conducted security threat analysis across the length and breadth of this country. We, and on, based on the results of this threat analysis, we've already mapped out our deployment strategies. We have customized our deployment strategies for each state. So the kind of deployment we will make in each state will be determined by the result of those analysis because we want to ensure that each state get a, a, tailor, a tailor to suit, a tailor-made security arrangement in order to handle the issues that we expect from those states. But on the whole, I want to assure Nigerians that the Nigerian police force, working in conjunction with the Nigerian military, the customs, the migration, the DSS, the, 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 the civil um, the civil defense, the prisons, the federal road safety, and other legitimate stakeholders uh, is poised to ensure that this election is not only hitch free, but crisis free in every sense of the word. Okay, uh, Mr. Mba, if I may just uh, follow up with some specifics. Three issues on election day, which perhaps our laws uh, don't, have not captured. Vote by, which has become a, diff, a new phenomenon. It happened in Ekiti, it happened in Oshun, and it was alleged that it happened in the very view of law enforcement agents. What would the police do when they see people buying, trading, uh, on vote buying. Then two, those who snatch ballot boxes where they think they are not doing well. They sma snatch and smash ballot boxes. Then three, on election day, policemen who follow government officials around, what is their status on that day? Will they be allowed? Um, let me deal with the triple issues you've just raised. First of all, vote buying. And I'll try to combine the question of vote buying with that of uh, snatching of ballot boxes. First of all, under our Electoral Act, vote buying is clearly an offense. Illicit dealing and trading on, vo on, on, on voters' card or any form of acts that you've, as, just as you've described as vote buying, um, is clearly prohibited. Both the buyer, the seller, and any other person that deals illicitly or Ill illegally on votes will act is actually committing an offense. And um, for us, once there is a crime, the police is expected to actually act. And in this particular election, we provided adequate training for our policemen on how to approach incidences like vote buying. And um, you, will, you will see a different police. You, you see us handling this differently this time around. We, the, the, the major challenge about vote buying is the fact that sometimes they actually happen in the closet or behind the scene. Because when two adults decide to illicitly, illicitly trade on PVC card or on votes, sometimes they don't do that in the public glare. However, this time around, we have also deployed covert operatives who will also be monitoring what the politicians do, particularly as it regards to, uh, as it regards to the issue of vote buying. So we also want to use this opportunity to actually warn politicians and perhaps advise the ordinary Nigerians there not to allow themselves to be dragged into acts of illegality by, by unscrupulous politicians. We will ensure that we bring the full weight of the law to bear on anyone or group of persons that might test our will by committing any form of electoral offense or offenses during, during this particular election. The issue of ballot, ballot box, uh, the issue of snatching of ballot, ballot boxes 
I think gradually we are beginning to move away from that because the the the, the INEC has indeed improved on so many aspects of on uh, um, so many aspects of this on so many aspects of the election, particularly in the ways and manner they conduct elections. So issues of votes, uh, ballot box snatches, and 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 other forms of mad practices are beginning to give way. And that's why the issue of vote buying is becoming a major contemporary challenge. But I, I want to reassure Nigerians that the Nigerian police force working with everybody, all the citizens, um, will do everything possible to ensure that this time around, if we don't eliminate them completely, we're able to uh, reduce issues of vote buying to the barest minimum. But again, we will need the support of everyone. We will need the support of the media, the support of all stakeholders, the support of the ordinary Nigerian out there. We perhaps also need to continue to embark on, on a lot of enlightenment, a lot, a, lot, a lot of voters' education. Nigerians need to understand the strength and power they derive from, from their PVCs, from their ability to cast their vote without being influenced by any form of financial inducement. Uh, so uh, th th these are ongoing issues, and we'll continue to work on them. We'll continue to improve on them. And if you watch the trajectory of, of electioneering and the conduct of general elections in Nigeria, you will understand that every time we have a general election, we improve on our capacity. Starting from 1999, when there was a smooth transition from the military era to the, to the democratic era, uh, to, to subsequent elections, 2011, 2015, and now 2019, what you've consistently seen is improved performance. Because what we do at the end of every election is to come back as a police organization, look at what we've done, assess it, tell ourselves the truth, and um, areas where we d did well, we adopt it probably as best practices and try to improve upon them. And the areas where we didn't do well, we look at it, we tell ourselves the truth, and then we try to look for ways to, to fix the mischief and the errors we made. Uh, we usually would take into consideration the criticisms of Nigeria, constructive criticisms of Nigerians, of the media, of the election observers, and even, uh, uh, even criticisms from INEC itself. And we put all these things into consideration and try to improve on our, on our capacity and ability to police the electoral system. So I, I want to reassure Nigerians that this 2019 will not be anything different. We will we'll take it a step further from what it used to be. Well, um, there was a last aspect of that question asked you, but let me just ask it with mine now. Um, first and foremost, can you tell us how many police officers will be deployed for these elections? And recently you made a statement that all policemen will be withdrawn from uh, those you consider as VIPs four days to the elections. How many have you been able to withdraw? And um, looking at 2015 elections where insecurity was limited to uh, really three states of the Northeast, uh, now it is more widespread. There are more peculiar security challenges in other states, almost 15 of them. Uh, what are the measures you're taking in such states? <laughs> you know, the issue with you guys is you pile up the questions so much that perhaps you need to have a computer brain for you to remember to answer all the questions. We do apologize. Uh, we will remind okay, you of the you, questions. You've just you've, you, you've, <laughs> you've, you've lumped up so much questions. So let's break now, it down. Let's I, start. I'll try to do justice so, to them. So, so let's start let, with let, the number of Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will, I will do justice to them. Let me start from the number of policemen that will be deploying. Mm -hmm. I've consistently said this, that we will not give figures. I mean, because that's strategic errors, and we will not make such strategic errors. What we are sure, Nigerians, is that practically almost every police officer in the employment or in the services of the Nigerian police force will be one way or the other involved in the conduct of this election. 
we will deploy all our human and material resources maximally for the conduct of this election. But I wouldn't want to give figures. The reasons are obvious. Our deployment strategies will vary. Some of the deployments are going to be covert. We'll be deploying some operatives covertly and as decoy operators. So if I tell you, for instance, that we're deploying a 1,000 policemen in, in FCT or in, in the metropolis of Abuja, and you decide to carry out a census, you may not find 1,000 police officers in uniform because some of them might be there, but covertly. So it, for me, that's not key. The key thing here is the fact that we are deploying our material and human resources maximally to ensure we deliver on our mandate of, of providing a, 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 a peaceful, crime-free, crisis-free atmosphere for the conduct of the election. And on the issue of withdrawal of policemen from VIPs, yes, that's clearly the, 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 the norm. As a matter of fact, this is yes, not the first time we're doing that. This, again, I told you about best practices that have, that, ha, that have evolved over time as we continue to improve and learn um, in the acts of policing uh, the electoral system. So during elections like this, two reasons. Number one, because we want to ens uh, uh, ensure that we have optimum utilization of our manpower, uh, or, or rather our human resources, we, we, we take the steps to, to also ensure that our, our policemen that are in the services of VIPs that are on special protection services are withdrawn and called back home and engage in, in this very important national assignment. Secondly, we also want to create a level playing field, and that's part of the thing the IGP um, Mohamed Adjamu did promise from the very first day he took over. And so part of the reason why we're also withdrawing our policemen is also to ensure that we don't give some politicians undue advantage. We do realize that even when the police officer in, in, attached to a VIP conduct himself very professionally and refuse to, to, and refuse to be engaged in any form, any form of unscrupulous act, the mere fact that a VIP is standing or going to cast his vote, and he has so three policemen around him, give that VIP some, some, some form of soft power. We want to minimize that. We want to dilute that. We want to take away that advantage of soft power around anyone and ensure that Nigerians are given a level playing field uh, during this election. And that's exactly what we're doing. So, I think I've, I've dealt with the two questions. The third one is the issue of insecurity. Again, I want to say here that there is no society in the world that is perfect. You can't find that. Officers and men of Nigerian police force have experience, huge experience, that we've garnered policing electoral processes around the world. We, 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 you, you need to realize this, that some of the experiences that we're deploying or some of the knowledge we are deploying are also from experience we gathered policing electoral processes other parts of the world. We've been in peacekeeping operations in Liberia. We have been midwifing and policing the electoral system. We were in Cote d'Ivoire. We were in Gambia. We were in Bosnia, Herzegovina. We were in East Timor. We were in Angola. We were in so many parts of the world where we also police the electoral system. And these parts of the world, some of them are post-conflict regions. And so if we have police electoral systems in other post-conflict areas, we have the capacity, we have the training, we have the competency to deliver in this election. We did it in 2015, we will do it again in 2019. All right, Mr. Mr. Frankenba, um, leading up to the elections, a lot of people, especially those that actually participated in the Oshu and Ekiti election, complain heavily about police brutality. The police are meant to protect those who are out there to cast their foot and actually um, exercise their franchise. But we've seen in time past that what was witnessed in Ekiti and Oshun State, whereby police actually took out, uh, took out their grievances on some people, being, as some people claimed that it was actually instructed by politicians. What what is the police force doing to ensure that no kind of brutality is meted out 
on innocent citizens who are just simply out to exercise their franchise on the day. Well, first of all, I didn't have the advantage of being the spokesperson during the Kitty and Oshua election. So I won't be able to speak from a vantage position and from an inner ring position. But all I want to reassure you and the rest of Nigerians and the rest of the world is that whatever are the defects, whatever are the strengths and weaknesses that were noticed in the Oshu and Ekiti elections will be taken into consideration in, in, in the conduct of the, 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 the elections that, that are around the corner. Um, everything about Oshu and Ekiti election cannot be on the negative side. I'm sure there are also positives that we will draw from those elections. And in the conduct of this election, we will be drawing from the negatives as well as the positives of the past elections, not just the Oshu and the Kiti elections, but also in all other elections we've had. And, it, and that's part of learning. That's, that, so for every election we've conducted in this country has been a learning call for us. So a Kiti election, Oshu election, 1999 election, 2011 election, 2015 election, they are all learning curves for us. And we draw from those experiences, we would draw from our, our mistakes, we would draw from our strengths and weaknesses, and we do everything to remedy the mischief and advance the positives in the conduct of this election. If I might just follow up there. Uh, recently, the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, Simintin, was quoted as saying that um, law enforcement security agents should not obey unlawful orders, which I consider as an advisory, not an instruction. What will our policemen consider as unlawful orders and which they shouldn't rest, uh, obey? Well, I, I, I think you've, you've answered my question. You've answered the question yourself. The statement of um, the diplomat is clearly an advice. And we take advice from everyone, including you. At the media, through the editorials, every day and all the time, do offer pieces of advice to us. Uh, politicians do. Religious leaders do. Uh, student union leaders do. So there is absolutely nothing wrong in a diplomat, and a diplomat of such high standing actually issuing an advice. Uh, and the good thing is that what you've said is, is part of the thing that constitutes international best practice. Everywhere in the world, law enforcement agencies are encouraged and trained to take only legitimate orders. And that's exactly what we've done. That's all what we do all the time. We are not we're not expecting anyone to give us illegitimate orders. We know we, we and and um, we don't expect to have any challenge with such. Mm. Well, Mr. Amba, we have seen a violence uh, um, during campaigns going into these elections. We've seen in Lagos, we've seen in Kwara, and just yesterday in Ogun State at the APC presidential uh, campaign rally, where even the president was heckled and uh, pebbles uh, you know, were pelted at uh, national leaders of the party. Is the force uh, worried that there might be an increase in violence going into these elections? And what are the measures you are taking to ensure that this violence at campaign rallies do not snowball into what we'll see on the national scale on the election day or days? Well, the force is certainly concerned about the activities of politicians even at this heightened time of political campaigns and politicians at, at, at every level. Um, but if you also notice the pattern and the trend of some of those um, cases, you will also discover that most of them are intra-party issues. And that's why, again, we must continue to work to strengthen internal democracy in some of these parties. In as much as politicians keep urging the, 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 the NPF to ensure we provide a level playing field, we also urge them to also help us by playing according to the rules. But on our part, we will 
continue to do what is right. We will continue to monitor those situations. Um, the incidents in, in, in Ogun State is already under investigation. And <clears throat> I may not be able to speak much on it until those carrying out the investigation turn in a report to, to the office of the IGP. But I can assure you that there is so much going behind the scene. There are a lot of stakeholders meeting taking place. There are a lot of constructive engagement the between the police leadership and, and political leaders. We are working day and night to help to change the narratives and tone down the rhetorics. We are also doing everything possible to put out positive messages. And I also want to appeal to the press to help us in this regard. Um, you don't expect that politicians at this point in time will not once in a while engage in some forms of acts that are um, in line with their politics. For us who are not politicians, you may, you, may, you may be a bit concerned, but for them who are politicians, that probably is part of their subculture. But all the same, I think all we need to do as a people is to continue to work together, um, send out more positive messages out there, engage with politicians and other stakeholders constructively, um, and law enforcement agencies like the police continue to intervene and continue to do what we can to ensure that we police the campaign rallies, we police the electoral system, and we ensure that those who commit crimes are equally brought to book. Uh, Mr. Frank Uba, we would like you to catch your breath as we go on a quick break on the show. Uh, we'll be right back. Please stay tuned. <laughs> 